Okay, I have eight o'clock on my watch. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me welcome all of our participants and our panelists today. My name is Dr. Leanne Walker. For those of you unfamiliar, I'm the program director for the marketing concentration and program here at Colorado State University Global Campus. I'm pleased to welcome you to our career success webinar series kicking off today's event. We are going to be speaking with a senior marketing director, Leanne Murray of um, Traders Village. And this event is called Marketing the Village, a Wild Ride. So just a few housekeeping notes for you all. Please note that this session will be recorded and all registered attendees will receive a recording after the event. We've got a great program for you today. I'm really excited to begin this evening's discussion, but a few things to keep in mind. At the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see a chat button there. Right now, I would love for you all to introduce yourself, tell us where you're Zooming from, share your major or your job, share what inspires you to be creative, maybe even why you're here, or just say hello. Just remember to select all panelists and attendees in the drop down field. I think it's, it's called everyone. So make sure that you do that. Also at the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. At any time during this presentation, we highly encourage you to submit any questions you might have, and we'll answer as many of those as we possibly can during the Q&A session of tonight's program. I wanted to take a brief moment before we bring Leanne on board for her presentation and just introduce Jared Counterman. Um, Jared, would you like to say a few words about your role here at the university and how students can use you for their success journeys? Absolutely. Um, good evening, my name is Jared Counterman. I'm the uh, um, Associate Director of Student Resources here at CSU Global. Um, so among many things, I directly support the Career Center, the Writing Center, and the tutoring services that CSU Global partners with. Um, so any questions related to those different services, um, I can certainly be reached on my uh, direct email. I'll share that in the chat here um, just in a moment. Um, or you can always reach out to either career.center at csuglobal.edu or writing uh, center um, at csuglobal.edu as well. So um, thanks for joining everybody. Thank you so much, Jared. All right, without further ado, let's welcome Leanne Murray. Leanne is a senior director of marketing at Traders Village, overseeing marketing initiatives for Dallas, Houston, and the San Antonio markets. She started her career on the agency side, as did I, um, where she was disciplined in advertising best practices. Now, as an in-house marketer reporting to the president, she is a key decision maker influencing the company's overall vision and executing business goals. Her diverse B2B and B2C client portfolio includes some of the most recognized brands in the world, such as Burger King, Four Season Resorts, Wendy's, Lowe's, Home Builders, Coca-Cola. Leanne holds a dual degree in marketing and hospitality management. Looking forward to hearing about that. Her degree is from Florida State University. Yay! Um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Leanne. Please enjoy the show and remember to pop those questions in the Q&A forum. Leanne? I saw Go Gators. All right, who is that? <laughs> I'm a Gator. All right. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can see, see that beautiful background. It looks like Paris. It is. Ding, Hold ding, on. Ding. Please stand by. All right. Everybody see everything? I can't. So normally when I do this, I can, I can see all the students. <laughs> so I'm only looking at the faculty. So you guys make sure if you can't hear me or you know speak up, let Leanne or Jared know. So um, like Leanne said, and thank you for having me, Jerry Leanne and Colorado State University. Uh, I reside here in Dallas and I work for Traders Village. So um, just briefly, Traders Village is a flea market. It is the biggest one in the United States. 
Uh, we also have, uh, it's part amusement park, it's part live entertainment. Um, we have a lot of concerts that come out there. So it's a very, very unique business model. So I am gonna go ahead and jump in. I am hugely passionate about marketing. So if you guys have picked marketing, you're interested in marketing, you're thinking about marketing, go for it. I absolutely love it, very passionate about it. So we'll go ahead and get started. So let me you know if you guys make sure you're following along. Okay, so this is, I saw this a couple weeks ago. I was in Denver with my family. We were actually in Durango and we were in a Starbucks, of course. That's how I live my life in the Starbucks. We were stopping by there and there was this bulletin board in there. And my son actually pointed it out. He said, oh, look, mom, you're doing that presentation about, you know, all those kids and what they want to be when they grow up. And I said, I did. I'm going to sit there and take pictures and talk to some of them. Um, he said, you know, I want more money. So we were laughing and I just thought it was perfectly fitting. Um, so I talked to some of the, the young kids that were there and, um, you know, their struggles during COVID and, you know, college and working and what they think they want to be, but, you know, they're in between, you know, kind of deciding their parents are pushing them one way, you know, they want to do something. Um, so I thought it was really cute. So I wanted to be a marine biologist. Uh, I grew up in Florida. I loved uh, marine animals. That is what I wanted to do. I wanted to live in the sea. And then I got into the math and science of it and decided very quickly that was not going to be the best route for me because I can barely add 10 plus 10. I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, my path is, so I went to Florida State. Like I said, I grew up in Florida. Similar to Colorado, uh, it's very, you know, there's a lot of tourism there. Um, it's, you know, so I decided uh, hospitality management was what I was going to do. I really liked people. I had worked at Disney. I'd worked at all these amusement parks. I'd worked at Church Street Station. For those of you who've been to Orlando, I really loved that atmosphere. Uh, at the time, hospitality management at Florida State was ranked uh, three in the nation. Uh, Corn Cornell was one. My parents weren't going to pay out of state tuition. So uh, Florida State it was. My dad went to Florida State. He was ATO. He was beside himself with joy. I think he wanted to live with me. Um, so I had decided on Florida State. I did get into University of Florida, whoever it is that put it there. Um, so I started at Florida State. Absolutely loved it. I took a hotel marketing class and it changed my life. I came back that summer. This was towards my junior year. I came home this summer and took a marketing class at UCF, which is University of Central Florida. For those of you who don't know, I absolutely fell in love with marketing. I fell in love with my teacher and I decided I wanted to double major. So here I am towards the end, I'm getting ready to graduate. And I say, mom, dad, I think I'm gonna stay another year um, and we'll major. And my dad said, you have exactly one year to finish that, the rest of that marketing degree and that's it. So I went back, I ended up double majoring. It was one of the most key decisions that I've ever made in my life. And we'll go into it a little bit more, but I've really been able to go between the two different disciplines. Um, and it has really helped my career a lot. So I started, uh, I was actually recruited um, to work at the Four Seasons Resort Palm Beach. They were doing uh, a seminar there and recruiting people. Um, so I went down to Palm Beach and worked in their communications marketing department. So I was there for a few years. And then I decided I really wanted to get more into the marketing discipline. Um, I was really fascinated with advertising agencies. Um, there was a huge one down in, in Fort Lauderdale, Zimmerman and Partners. Um, that was where I wanted to go. So thus began um, multiple advertising agencies uh, all over the U.S., um, uh, you know, Florida, Miami, um, you know, obviously in Houston and Dallas, also in Atlanta. So I've spent the bulk of my career um, in advertising agencies. 
and we'll go further into the pros and cons uh, from my point of view. I, I'd reached a point where I got a little burnt out with agencies. I'd wanted to slow down a little, spend more time with my family, be home more. You know, the pace was, you know, it was, it, it was a lot. Um, so I actually, in the meantime, got my real estate license. Um, again, I highly recommend diversifying yourself. Um, don't pigeonhole yourself into one degree. Really learn as much as you can, get as many certificates as you can. Uh, I was finished my real estate uh, classes, get, preparing for my test, and I got a call from the HR director at Traders Village. And he said, I love your background of marketing and hospitality. We're looking for a director of marketing here. It's an amusement park. You're going to be doing a lot with um, vendors. There's music, promotions. Uh, the one we had is retiring. We really want you to come in. I said, nope, I'm done. I'm going, uh, I'm going into real estate. I'm going to do consulting and marketing um, for real estate agents. Uh, I decided I was going to use my marketing to um, help real estate agents. I went into Traders Village. I met with the president after a two and a half hour interview. And that was it. I was sold. I came home and said, I'm going to go on the client side, honey. Now, Traders Village is, you know, it is a flea market. Uh, we have about 3,500 vendors. And for all intensive purposes, um, it's 3,500 small businesses. It is extremely unique. We have three different markets. Um, like Leanne said, we have San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. Uh, so I report to the president out of the Dallas office. Uh, we have marketing managers in each of them. And we all work really closely together. Um, and as I go through it, you'll see kind of the different projects that I've worked on. So I've uh, been at Traders Village for three years, um, which would be on the client side. So I think one of the and really wanted me to talk to you guys is uh, I have been on the agency side and the client side. I guess technically, if you think about Four Seasons, I did a little bit on the client side went to agency and then went back, went back to the client side. Um, but the bulk of my career has been in agencies. So, you know, here's kind of some of the pros and cons. Um, so with agencies, usually you'll work on a lot of different clients. So you'll have a huge client where you do more projects on, or you'll have a lot of little clients. If you want to work at a top agency, you're going to have to move to Chicago, New York, San Francisco. Um, I think Atlanta and Dallas are actually some of the newer markets. But if you want to work in those BBDOs and those top, top agencies, you're probably going to have to move. Um, there are long, long hours. Um, now, not to say that things haven't evolved and gotten better. Um, but it wasn't unusual to work from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. every day uh, to make sure that ads were running. Um, and then when I was younger, uh, you know, you don't know it, you know, not, not the worst thing. You're hanging out with your friends. You've become close. It's great. You're working till two. You're getting up at six. Um, but expect very long hours. Uh, clients can be very demanding. Um, I used to have calls at all different hours. Uh, you know, it is what it is. They're, they're paying, you know, huge fees for this. So the pay tends to be a little bit uh, lower. Again, it's probably gotten better since then. Um, but I think I started at $15,000, um, which is, is crazy. Uh, the competition. So again, at those top levels in those top cities, at those top agencies, you're going to be competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. They are very hard to get into and the turnover is really high. The agency, they you know, joke about it. It's work hard, play hard. Um, you work extremely hard a lot of the time, um, but we also play hard. So a lot of my closest friends that I have now are um, the people that I met uh, in the agency life and we're all still really close. So on the client side, of course, you have typically one client. 
uh, you're working for one client, but you have multiple pro projects along that one client. The work-life balance is like night and day, I, I, at least for me. Again, I'm speaking to the agencies I've been at and the company I'm, not, I'm at now on the client side. Um, you know, my, my days, uh, you know, I work an interesting schedule. Um, you know, I work weekends and stuff, like that, but it's, it's pretty much eight to five. Um, I'm hardly past, you know, five, six o'clock. So there's a huge work-life balance there. Uh, your salary, um, you know, of course, now I'm making more than I did when I was younger at the, the agency side, but client side in general uh, tend to pay more because you're working for them. You are more invested in them and their projects. The agencies, you're working for their clients, uh, not necessarily them. Sure, you want to do good, but, you know, the client is more invested in their marketing team because they're driving the business. Uh, the client side also, you know, for me, I own the project. I don't have 19 different meetings. I don't have, you know, you know, all these different people I have to go to to get approvals. Um, you know, you have your copywriters, your media. There's a lot of people come together. Uh, in an agency to get something pushed through. Typically on the client side, the marketing department owns that project. You're not going back and forth with people, you're handling it internally. So here's just obviously a very limited snapshot um, to give you guys an idea of just some of the campaigns I've worked on. Um, so, you know, we worked for Lowe's home improvement. Um, so we did a lot of, uh, you know, TV photo shoots for them um, when Jimmy Johnson was there. <clears throat> Burger King, we got to work. You know, the great thing about agencies is you work on a lot of very interesting and kind of pop culture. So like looking back on Eclipse and, you know, Iron Man, you know, QSRs are very interesting. They have a lot of interesting stuff going on. You know, they're always trying to be trendy. So you're always working on the coolest projects. And that was, you know, absolutely a great thing on the agency side. You do a lot of uh, packaging. You do a lot of rebranding. Um, these are just a few things that I worked on. So your client is introducing a new product, uh, anything that goes in stores, you know, you do a lot of photo shoots with that. You do their, you know, brochures, websites. Um, I love the packaging aspect of uh, agencies. I think it's really cool to come up with, with new packaging. You can see kind of what we did for the Weber, um, if you guys have seen those before. So, you know, it's so weird. You see it in the grocery store and you're like, wow, I actually had a hand in what that package looks like. That's pretty cool. Client side. Uh, so again, I'm on the client side now at, at Traders Village. We are, um, we are flea market. So we're about, you know, 80% Hispanic. Um, and let me tell you right now, if you're living, if you are not thinking about your Hispanic consumer, you are behind. No matter where you go, they are going to be the driving force in your up and coming market pains. So get a good grip on them now. Um, so I had a bright idea once I first started at Traders Village and here I have just started this job. I had an epiphany in the shower, which is where I do my best work. I said, you know what? I really think we should go to Mexico City because I wanna film the families there. I'll go to the Mercados. I wanna taste the food. I wanna really dive into the culture. So uh, like every good marketer, uh, I took it to my boss who is the president and um, shaking, knowing I'm gonna lose my job as soon as I tell him I wanna go to Mexico City because that's really the dumbest idea possible. And he looked at me and said, uh, put some numbers together and uh, a plan and let me know. So three months later, we were in Mexico City. So we went with our GM, we went with our food and beverage director, we went with our entertainment director, and we spent um, five days in Mexico City meeting all the people, going to the Mercados. You can see our videographer there. I'm not going to play the commercial for you. Uh, so we had this commercial on Univision and Telemundo. Um, we partnered with them. It was 
absolutely the most amazing project and work experience I've had, uh, absolutely to date. I look back on it now, um, and this was uh, two and a half years ago, with such pride that we did this. And I won't go into all the nitty gritty of what it's like to film in an international city um, when you don't know the language and, uh, you know, but you guys, you know, watch the video in your spare time. Um, you know, we look back on it with such pride, you know, that we were able to really come together uh, as a team and do that. So, since that commercial was such a huge hit, we had vendors saying, oh my gosh, I saw that commercial. Um, I had people like contacting me constantly about it and how did I get the idea? And I was asked to submit an award for it. Um, so it worked out so great that the following year, we decided to um, actually go to Monterey, Mexico um, and shoot with an influencer. Uh, so that is um, Houston's Lala. Uh, she is a huge, huge influencer in Houston, which we have a market there in Houston. I contacted her out of the blue because her presence, her social presence was so amazing and on target with what we wanted to do. I contacted her out of the blue and said, we are going to Monterey, Mexico, and I want you to come with us to shoot a commercial. So um, you can see her there in some of the pictures we shot um, in the parks. So up in the left, you'll see that is my storyboard. So I do a lot of storyboarding for my commercials, even if it's a morning show. Uh, I will take a wall in the building and I will print out and write the script and then each of the pictures as I see, as I see fit. So they laugh at me, they come down the hall because I'll be looking at it, I'll be changing stuff. Um, it's a really, really fun, fun experience. I love storyboarding. Um, again, influencers. So we work with a lot of influencers. Uh, she's Tio Choco, um, you know, from Dallas. Uh, some of them from Houston or San Antonio. We, so influencers are, have been a really, huge staple for us. So we don't have multi-million dollar budgets. Uh, we're, not, we're not a Disney. We have to be smarter. We have to be scrappier. Um, we have to really use, you know, uh, our diverse uh, influencers to really help us get the message out. Um, and a lot of them have been close friends since then. It's been, it's been a really great experience for us using them. Media, so I work obviously a lot with media. Um, so I book all the media um, for all of the market. So I work with all the TV stations, uh, the digital partners, print, billboards, um, uh, radio. I work with a lot of the sports teams. Um, a lot of them we do advertising with as well. <clears throat> so we get to go to a lot of the, uh, the sports games and all the different markets. We do a lot of the morning shows, um, which are always fun to meet, you know, the host. Uh, a lot of our uh, food events, yeah, we do food shows for. You can see just some of the, the pictures there. And then that one in the middle actually is we hosted a media day. Um, uh, my food director, Tina, and I decided we would host all of the media in Dallas at our market. Uh, so they could see the rides and the food and the events and really give them a firsthand view. Um, and it was actually wildly successful. And we've done a couple more since then. So something really, really fun that happened last February is we were approached by a TV station, um, uh, Jessica, Jessica Beale's production team, actually, to use our market to film uh, Cruel Summer. Uh, if you guys um, haven't seen that, it's on Freeform and Hulu uh, with some of, some of the young stars. So for uh, the whole week, uh, they all came out. We have uh, TV crews, you can see them filming at night. It was freezing. It was probably negative 10 uh, in February here. Uh, a lot of COVID protocols, um, but this is a great example of creating different revenue streams for your business. 
if you are in charge of marketing your market, you have to find the box. You have to do different things. You have to think differently about your business and make money, especially with COVID. Um, you know, we were shut down for almost two months. That's a lot of lost income, right? So, I mean, you have to constantly be thinking about how you can put yourself out there at a bus as a business. I personally have registered us, um, you know, for all of the, the movie uh, movie companies in Dallas and Texas and all of the respective markets. Um, and we've gotten calls for people to come out and use uh, our market to shoot movies. So again, just thinking differently about, about marketing. Um, so during COVID, uh, we also thought it'd be a great time to buy a roller coaster. So unheard of, there is no flea market that buys a roller coaster that puts in the middle of their market. Now, granted, we have amusement park rides already. So we have, you know, Pharaoh's Fury, we have the swings, the yo-yo. The roller coaster is a whole, whole other level. So uh, my boss comes to me and says, we've decided to buy a roller coaster. We need to start thinking about marketing it. Well, I work at a flea market. I've never really sold a roller coaster idea to anybody. So how do I sell a roller coaster plus a, this idea of a roller coaster at a flea market? Um, which of course I love a good challenge. Uh, so you can see uh, over on the left, uh, I work, work with a designer. And here's the other fun thing about marketing. You get to work with all these cool creative people, right? So you have designers, you know, on something like this, you're working with architects, you're working about, you know, there's color schemes, um, there, there's PR, so there's a lot of PR involved in launching a roller coaster. You can see some of the magazines we were picked up in um, and some of the influencers, you know, logo creation. Uh, it's almost like creating its own brand. Um, and a lot of this, I have to say, had I not had my agency experience and all that found working with copywriting and designers and brand teams, I don't know if I would have been able to pull off a lot of the things I've been able to do. Uh, again, we're a huge redesign, um, which is always really exciting to be involved in. Uh, as marketers, we change the perception of our businesses. People view our businesses. Um, we changed their perceptions of them. Uh, this is a new design that we're going to be rolling out uh, next year. We're actually going to be branding uh, once the roller coaster launches, just the um, <clears throat> rides will be open to the public. Um, so you can see just website. That bottom left is actually a building, and that is a hand painted uh, mural that we um, contracted an artist to do. He's really done fabulous work for us. So my top five, if I could look back on my life and then always looking forward as well, I would say my top five are, like I said before, diversify. So I ended up double majoring. It was a crazy idea, um, you know, but I went ahead and double major. So double majoring, minoring, you know, learning, learning a language, um, stepping outside your comfort zone, uh, shadowing people in other businesses. Uh, it's really important. You are going into marketing. If you can't market yourself and be diverse in all your experience, you're not going to have anything to offer these businesses. Um, you're not doing banking and you're not doing finance. Um, you know, get creative. Be open to different opportunities. I came up through agencies. I've worked at world-class hotels, resorts. I've worked at some of the top agencies on some of the top brands. And you know what? I work at a flea market now and it is the most amazing, passionate, fun job I've ever done in my life. Your path is not always gonna be the same that you think it's going to be. Be open to other opportunities. Thirdly, um, and Leanne knows this, I am, I am passionate about traveling. I think travel makes me a better person. It makes me more sympathetic and it makes me a better 
marketer. I think you see things differently. I think you network differently. Um, obviously, I go to a lot of conferences. Uh, my food and beverage director, we just went out to Denver um, to go to Elitch Gardens to look at the amusement park. So what are they doing? You know, how are they doing stuff? What does their signage look like? What is their staff like? What are their uniforms like? And bringing that information back to uh, our market here. Take risk. I don't doubt any of the risks that I've done. They were amazing experiences that I still look back. Um, filming a commercial in Mexico City was uh, absolutely one of the biggest risks I could have taken. It's a lot of work to film internationally. Um, I, I guess actually twice now. It's like, who does that, right? I mean, it's, it was an incredible experience. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Do something different. And last but not least, don't work for jerks. Surround yourself with smart, positive, driven, passionate people that you work together with, that it, not in spite of you, but working with you your coworkers, your bosses. And I have had some real spill people. We'll just leave it at that. And I know, you know, back when I was coming up through agencies, especially as a woman, uh, it, it was, it's different than it, you know, is now. Um, they've done a lot of work on the agency side, you know, moving those kind of toxic culture and people out, but don't do it go somewhere else, tell someone, surround yourself with people that are really going to elevate you and your work. And lastly, you know, job search. Uh, I can't leave here without talking about some of my job search strategies. Um, I've spoken with a couple of universities on these. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to hate this. If you are graduating soon, or if you're applying for a top internship at one of these agencies, make sure your social media profiles are private. Yes, we're going into a fun industry. There are beer carts agencies that go up and down and you're partying and having fun and you're traveling around doing all these shoots. But you know what? That's not the HR person looking at your information. Be fun on the back end, not on the front end. Don't let them see that. LinkedIn, LinkedIn critical. It was critical in some of my other job searches. It's still critical now. I've heard uh, even that it is one of the top sites for the Hispanic uh, demographic. You should be connecting on there right now. You should be asking for recommendations. If you've done internships, if you have babysat, if you have done jobs, if you've had professors, if you have had uh, anything of the sort, you need to start asking for recommendations. You would be shocked at how many people, especially the top people, the top executives, look at pe what people say about you. Start creating a portfolio of your work. So put it on a video, put it on, uh, put it out on LinkedIn, you know, projects you've done in school, create your own projects, uh, you know, if you've done a digital, if you've been part of redoing a website, start getting all that work together now. You are going to go out into the job market with millions of other smart, talented people. Uh, a resume writer. I, I'm fairly good with English. I'm a good reader. I'm a good writer. I literally read and write everything for my business uh, that actually goes out on, on media. I hired someone look at my resume and they completely changed my thoughts on uh, what I was saying about myself and really, really elevated it. It's not super expensive. Um, there's a lot of them on LinkedIn that you can find, you know, absolutely have somebody elevate your resume for you. And again, I've spoken about this before. We're in marketing. You're going to have to set yourself apart learn a language, do a video interview, do something different, uh, you know, travel the world, be able to speak about things outside of just, are you a good copywriter? Do you know, you know the difference in greens? Um, and last but not least, be creative. 
we are in a super fun, awesome, there is no better job than marketing, uh, at least in my mind. That's why I'm here. So that's it. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I don't know if you guys got my social handles. Um, uh, I think it was in my profile. Leanne can send those out. Please link in with me on LinkedIn. I am always available for questions. Uh, I know at the other universities, um, I still talk to some of the students there who are getting ready to go into the job market. So please reach out to me anytime. That's Thank some you really guys great so advice. Much. Please, questions. Yeah. I love questions. That's some really great advice. And something that I always encourage students to do is go ahead and make those connections, especially with our guest speakers. Um, connections are a great way to get leads and to network and get referrals. And obviously your professors are great for recommendations. Um, thank you so much, Leanne. Your presentation was wonderful. And we do have several questions for you. Um, oh, wow. I first wanted to thank um, you for coming and presenting and for Jared for being here and all of our attendees. Um, just so everybody knows, I'm a little biased with Leanne because her and I have known each other for the better part of 20 years. Um, we both were on the agency side, so much of what she was saying, I was shaking my head, yes, it is, you know, long hours. Um, we worked hard, we played hard. Um, you're literally with your agency family in the morning, you're with them at night. So definitely um, understand that. But the whole point about not pigeon, pigeonholing yourself to one area is so critical because you look at Leanne now and the things that she's done since our agency days. And here I am teaching marketing in, in higher education. So really be open to the opportunities that come your way. And the other point you made that's so critical is the travel part. Um, we had a guest speaker earlier in the year, James Gregson from Lego, and he said the very same thing. He does his best uh, really? thinking I when he's in nature. Here, so. Yeah, I mean, a travel is so important. It gives you that perspective and that worldly view of different things and different cultures, and you get to experience that and you be, you're able to share that. So. Um, yes, definitely wonderful, wonderful thoughts. So just remember, if you have a question as we go through the ones that we received, please be sure that you put it in the Q&A. Um, let's get started. All right, so I think you touched on this um, when you were on summer vacation, but when did you know that this was what you wanted to do when you grew up? So, well, I knew that I had this creative part of me. Uh, which I got from my mom. So my mom was a, a creative type. Uh, she was a sewer. She wore, you know, glued together sea glass and made mirrors. And I was always redecorating my room and painting and pottery. So I knew I wanted to do something in that field, something where I could be creative. Um, and, you know, it just growing up in Florida too, just being around, you know, all that tourism, you know, enjoying just people. It's such a different, different industry. And there were a lot, honestly, there were a lot of things I didn't want to do. I, I am just not cut out for a lot of the jobs out there. Um, a lot of the things my friends do, you know, anything, you know, accounting, finance, doctor, I have no desire to do any of that. So, um, it really resonated with me when I took the uh, hotel marketing class at Florida State and uh, just ended up with a really fabulous, fabulous professor at UCF. And you know what? I think if I had had a crappy professor, um, maybe it, my life would have been a different story, but she was passionate about marketing. You could feel it. Um, and she just made me look at it completely different. And I, you know, to go back and double major and add another year on, you know, people thought I was crazy, um, including my parents, but I knew it. I knew it was for me and I knew I wanted to explore more. You're on mute, Leanne. So that's great. Cause that actually answered one of the questions, which was what was your favorite? 
class in college. So that probably was the turning point for you. So I can attest to that. Yeah. So that leads to another <laughs> question along these lines. Point. Yeah. So professors talk about the importance of developing a marketing budget for their marketing plan. Can you share your thoughts on how to best develop or start that? So, yeah, so mine is a little unique because I have three, so I have three different markets and each market has their own budget because the media and the cost is different per market. Um, so for instance, Dallas is a top five TV market. I know my budget's going to have to be a lot more than say a San Antonio, which is a top 23, 25 TV market. So I'm going to spend probably three times more in Dallas. I mean, these are just, you know, working with media partners, doing your research, knowing how, you know, same thing with billboards. They are much more expensive in Dallas than they are in other markets. Um, so usually I wrap my head around my biggest cost first, and that's TV. So if I know I'm going to be doing a branding year, I start with my TV uh, and then it kind of trickles down from there. If we have major events that need a uh, radio push, I know what the top stations are. I know those are going to cost more. Um, but also I, I've pulled back a lot on our traditional media, especially since COVID, um, because I needed to pivot very quickly. So we are doing a lot more with digital and influencers and PR than we are with traditional media now. Your traditional media buys are always going to be more expensive um, than you know your influencers and your digital and your targeting campaigns. Especially if you're one of the top five markets, your media is going to be expensive. Gotcha. That's good advice. So what did you do when you were on the two-month COVID break? Oh. Uh, Oh, um, we actually, we still went into work, um, as crazy as it is. So our market's only open the weekends, only, it's only been Saturday and Sunday. Um, but we, we have an office that we go into. So we actually still kept going in the office. Um, you know, we still had stuff we had to do. We had to make sure, you know, like all the food stands, everything was still functioning. We were preparing for opening. Um, you know, and I have to say it was a pretty it was a pretty dark time. Um, we, we were talking about messaging and how are we gonna open up you know, safely. We had to put all this signage out in the market to prepare our market to reopen. What does that social message look like? It, it actually went by really quick. Um, the hardest part was probably reopening. You know, they, Traders Village is almost 50 years old and they have never closed, never, no, no ice storm, no, no, nothing. Um, so this was the first time in 50 years that they had closed. So it was a really surreal time going around the market on that first weekend that it was closed. There was no music, no children, um, nobody eating. Um, it was, it was a really dark, dark, sad time. For wow. I can imagine that so many people were affected, including our students during that time. So thank you for that reflection. Um, we often hear that there are two sides to hiring. Some people want to hire people with that technical capability and other people want to hire uh, individuals who have that personality, that culture fit. So if you could talk about the top two or three skills that you look for, or perhaps a personality traits, characteristics in, in, in the person you're hiring for your team? Yes, and my number one is someone that plays well with others, because you know what? I can teach almost anything, but I cannot teach someone to get along with the president, the other marketing managers, with IT, with the graphic designer, I can't teach or help personality. Um, I need someone that's going to really play well with others. Uh, I never, honestly, um, I've never really looked at technical, technical skills. Uh, I've always kind of really hired based on gut when they came in. Um, I usually ask questions which will let me know if they are 
hardworking, uh, innovative, if they're passionate about marketing, all the other stuff, all the other stuff I can teach. Mm -hmm. That's good. See, it falls in one of the two categories. Either you like the technical stuff and they can do that really well, or you like the culture fit and they have that personality that you're really looking for. So we had a question come in, excluding weddings and conferences when you were at the Four Seasons, how are you able to bring in sales? Um, because we know the Four Seasons is a luxury brand. Um, the student says 95% of companies won't send business travelers to the Four Seasons. So how did you revenue, how did you generate revenue besides weddings and conferences? Well, yeah, so the Four Seasons, so the Four Seasons, it's, it's its own brand. So people know the Four Seasons. The people that go to Four Seasons and Ritz-Carlton go to Four Seasons and Ritz-Carlton. So if your hotel's Five Star Five Diamond um, and they want to go to Palm Beach, they're going to go to Four Seasons. But, you know, Four Seasons does very little advertising in case you haven't noticed it's only recently they've done some of these uh digital ads that you see they don't really do tv you're not going to hear about four seasons on the radio they don't have influencers four seasons sells itself so from a day-to-day -day perspective what did you do at four seasons so i was hired on as the communication um so that was all so I had two different departments. So I was hired on with communications, which has to do with communicating with the guests. So uh, phone calls, uh, notice, making sure, you know, room service was there on time, any complaints that went through, uh, the switchboard system, kind of guest relations. Uh, and then I moved upstairs to the sales and marketing department um, as, you know, again, this was when I first started. So as a uh, sales and marketing coordinator. So I reported to the sales, the sales managers and they did a lot. So, you know, they would go around to different parts of the country. Uh, they call them, you know, they make their calls. Uh, so they'd have sections of the countries. Um, so you would prepare for that, you know, with their, you know, brokers or um, set up client meetings for them. Um, we also had some, you know, we had some shoots uh, that, pe that people would come out and do uh, at the Four Seasons. So, we, you know, we were kind of in charge of that. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it was, you know, there were a lot of weddings and a lot of like a lot of parties. Uh, we had a lot of celebrities at this particular Four Seasons. So there was a lot of communication about, you know, uh, safety and, you know, they brought their own chefs and, you know, making, making sure everybody's really, you know, talking, communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, we have time for one more question. And the question is, we've talked about a lot of things today. So looking back and reflecting on your journey to where you are now, is there anything that you would change or do differently? No. No, there's really, that's why I would have, I would have spent time at agencies, but I would have left agency life earlier. Yeah. I would have moved to the client side earlier in my career. I don't regret working at agencies because it has totally catapulted me to where I am, but I probably would have severed that toxic relationship earlier mm -hmm. and moved to the client side. Okay, so that leads me to a tangent question that I'm just going to follow up with. So when you were in college, um, thinking back of when you were in college and where you are now, was there things that you wish that you had done or learned or explored in college that might have helped you along your journey? Yes, I would have learned another language. Learn mm. another language immediately. <laughs> it is one of the forget technical skills. People want people that have learned another language. Do it now. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, that is our time this evening. I want to thank Leanne Murray for being here and Jared Counterman as well. Just one mo more note that I wanted to mention for you all to watch her inbox. For the next career webinar, September 22nd, we're going to be chatting with Kelsey Little 
global brand storyteller for GoFundMe. So watch your email for that. Thank you all so much for attending tonight. Thank you so much, Leanne and Jared. Thank you, Thank guys. You both. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Leanne. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And message me, you guys, if you have any questions. I'm always available. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Until next time. Good night, everybody. Good night.